I've had this HBX 16890A truck now for about a month and I've done a ton of testing on it. I've become really familiar with it and I've put together a list of pros and cons I want to go over. I've already done seven different videos on this truck, anything from running it on the beach, ripping it on baseball fields. My six-year-old daughter actually ran it in the video. I've tested it on 3S. I ripped the parked gearbox and inspected that after quite a bit of running to see how it's been holding up. All kinds of videos, so if you're interested in this truck, definitely check out some of those other videos. But this one here, again, I'm gonna go over some of the pros and cons I found using this truck in the past month. But uh, overall, this truck has been awesome. Real quick, my unboxing video went into more detail, but it's four wheel drive, has full ball bearings, full metal drivetrain, so the diff, the spur gear, the um, shaft that connects the front drivetrain to the rear, all that is metal, brushless motor, it has a uh, solid ESC, which is not rated for 3S, but seems to run fine on 3S, provided it's not too hot outside. I have not tested it in the heat. And um, came with two sets of tires, two chargers, all kinds of stuff. So very solid truck at this price point, but we'll go ahead and go into much more detail here in just a minute. The first pro I'm gonna start off with is these HBX trucks are known for being very durable. And this 16890A is no exception, although I did find a few weak points. So while overall the truck is very durable, um, the issues I ran into were the wing snapped off after several runs when I rolled it on pavement. And the body, when I first touched it, you know, it seemed kind of thin compared to like my Armor Big Rock, for instance. But uh, I have since reinforced it with Gorilla Tape. Of course, you can use shoe goo and drywall tape or Flex Seal. But as you can see, there's a, a big crack here. And uh, one of my videos, when I uh, flipped the truck, it kind of went head over tail a few times. I think that's when that happened. But uh, I've never had a body break that easily. I suppose it could have just hit a rock just right or something when it was flipping. But overall, these trucks are very durable, but those are the two weak spots I found. The next thing I wanna to touch on is the durable four-wheel drive system. It has front and rear differentials, and I mean, it's very capable. Uh, it does very well off-road, and the differentials are, are highly functional, and uh, it's an all-metal drivetrain. So the, both differentials, all-metal, spur gears are metal, the drive shaft down the middle here, that's metal, the cups and the dog bones, all metal. The steering servo, I found it plenty powerful. It's plenty quick. It does a good job. So at this price point, I was just blown away by how good the steering is. And on top of that, the transmitter has a really nice function. It has dual rate steering. Now 2S, the steering was pretty good out of the box, but at 3S, I found it a little too touchy and it was hard to control. But with the dual rate steering, you can turn down the sensitivity or the, that limits the range of the steering. So instead of going full lock like that, full lock might be something like that, which is real helpful when you're going um, high speed. So that was a really nice function of this truck. And speaking of the transmitter, I'm gonna compare this truck quite a bit to my Armor Big Rock. Now this HBX truck was only $120. It's normally priced at $150. My Armor Big Rock is priced at $330. So. The transmitter on this HBX truck is on the left, the Arma is on the right, and overall, the feel of the HBX transmitter is on par with the Spectrum transmitter. It's maybe a little more plasticky overall, but it has a really nice feeling, and the controls I actually like better on the HBX transmitter. The right here on the top, you have your steering trim, your steering dual rate, and your speed adjustment on the um, truck. It's uh, infinitely adjustable with this dial here. You can reverse the servos and the throttle, not that you need to. And of course there's the on off switch. So very nice transmitter that comes with this truck. The Arma Big Rock, it's pretty bare bones. Um, I was surprised Spectrum even put their name on this thing because uh, it's not impressive at all. 
The truck came with two sets of tires. I have the off-road tires on here now. It also came with a set of paddle tires, which are advertised for use in sand, and it worked great on the beach. I have not had a chance to run it in the snow yet, but I look forward to doing that. But it's really nice having two sets of tires. It comes with a wheelie bar, which is really cool. And the wheelie bar actually has bearings in it, which even my uh, Traxxas Bandit wheelie bar does not have bearings in it. However, it's very limited with its adjustability. It has the three adjustments here. So I can't lower it any more than this. And I find it's too aggressive up like this. It, it would be ideal if it would stop the truck more like here um, or even down closer to this, have an adjustment where to get that close to the ground where these wheels are down touching the ground when the truck's at an angle like this. Um, but the wheelie bar is very limited. So that's something I wish HBX would look to improve in the future. Now the 2S top speed isn't real fast, goes uh, about 23 miles an hour, but I found it to be very punchy, uh, plenty of power. And when I threw a 3S in this truck, while it's not rated for 3S, it performed flawlessly. And it's just ridiculously fast then for the size of this truck. It goes nearly 35 miles an hour on the TAT2 3S battery I tested, and nearly 34 miles an hour on a Ovonic battery I tested. The Avonic battery is way too big for this truck. The TAT2 battery can fit perfectly with a slight modification. I go into way more detail in the video where I tested it at 3S, but I just had to cut a small section of the body out to make this TAT2 3S battery fit. Awesome battery though, highly recommend this. And it was only, it's like 15 or $16. So if you want to go 3S, this battery is a great option and performs very well. While talking about batteries, the uh, truck comes with two 2S batteries. They perform just fine. Again, it hit about 23 miles an hour. I tried this Luperior 2S battery as well. It was on par with the uh, OEM batteries. And this one is only $8, although you have to pay shipping. So you need to buy several of them to make it worthwhile. But the Tattoo 3S battery is awesome. I think this is the way to go. And if it's too fast, you can just take and turn down the speed on the transmitter here and get good run times and have as much speed as you could ever want in this truck. Any faster, yeah, it could be kind of cool, but it's gonna be really hard to control. So this battery offers plenty of performance. Another really cool feature of this truck, it has oil-filled shocks uh, and they're metal-bodied shocks and they're adjustable. As you can see here, I have the rear springs compressed more than the front that gives it a better ride height and the shocks work very well especially for this price point one thing i did not touch on with these batteries is they do provide good run time especially with two of them and with the chargers that are included, it comes with the USB style chargers. They work just fine. And of course, with two of them, you can um, charge these batteries in probably about an hour and a half or so. And a nice feature too, is if you have a power bank like this, if you're in the uh, field or whatever, you can just plug them right into a power bank, plug your batteries right into the power bank and there we go, it's charging. So a power bank like this could easily charge two of these batteries, or if you're running one of them, you could be charging another at the same time. So these USB chargers are nice, but they're limited. These batteries are very cheap, so it's not a huge concern, but LiPos hate to be left fully charged or fully discharged. Over time, it'll lessen their capacity and ruin the um, amount of times you're able to charge them before they, their performance is just really poor. 
So when you're done running the truck, you wanna charge this battery about halfway. So if you run it all the way down, throw it on the charger for about a half hour, and that'll get it close. Now, if you have a hobby grade charger, of course, that's a much better option. And then you can set it to storage voltage, which is gonna draw it right down to the optimum voltage, which is about half a charge. The last pro I wanna to touch on is the customer support with HBX I found to be very good. I've had no problem getting responses when I had questions, they're quick to reply. And uh, that can be rare with some of these budget companies. So HBX customer service in my uh, experience has been really good. So for $150, which is the usual price for this truck, or you can find it on sale for less. Uh, it was $120 when I got this truck. Um, a lot of value here. For scale, here's my Arma Big Rock, which is one-tenth scale. And here is the HBX truck. So, quite a bit smaller, but it's it's really fun and it's a lot easier to haul around and you need smaller batteries. And of course it's a lot cheaper. So I enjoy the heck out of both of these trucks, but I will say the HBX truck has been more reliable and the drivetrain has been more durable than my Arm of Big Rock. So take that for what it's worth. The transmitter is on par with, what, with this truck and overall it's performed very comparable to my Armour Big Rock uh, when you take out of the equation just how small it is. Now I'll go ahead and touch on some of the cons I found using this truck over the past month. While this truck does have a brushless motor, it's a 3500 kV 2840 brushless motor, I did find it got surprisingly warm and actually pretty hot on 3S if you really run it for a long time. So. I wish they included a heat sink with this. I'll probably purchase one for the truck. I've only run this truck in cooler temperatures, but motor got a little warmer than my other brushless vehicles. So just, you know, it's a bit concerning. Another thing that I did not love about this truck, and it's probably just because of the short wheelbase and it's 1 16th scale, but it's prone to snap oversteer. Or when you try to drift it, it's real hard to keep it in the drift. A lot of times the back will just let go and swing around and it's just, you know, harder to keep stable than my other vehicles. That being said, part of that's probably these off-road tires. I did not find these tires to work very well off-road. Uh, if it had some little spikes, it would work better. They use 12 mil millimeter hexes, so you can easily buy a dedicated set of off-road tires, but these did not perform that well. So I'll have to test it on some spikes and I think the handling will definitely better off-road with that setup. But yeah, these did not blow my hair back, that's for sure. However, they are, um, they have sponges in them and they're definitely not the worst tires. So at this price point, they're fine, but the handling off-road, it's just, it's a handful. It's uh, difficult to, to drift it. Whereas my arm of Big Rock, that thing can, you can drift like a champ. My six-year-old daughter can drive that thing like and make it look like she's a pro. As I mentioned earlier, the wing. It seems almost like it was an afterthought. It was only connected to the body in these two spots and it broke off after a few runs. I keep this part of the wing in place just because I think it helps protect the body a little bit but I don't think I'll be buying a new wing because I think if I get a new one, it's just gonna break pretty quickly like the first one did. I touched on the wheelie bar. Again, I wish it had some more adjustability so you could limit how far the front end comes up. It'd be really useful for high speed runs on road. And just for holding wheelies. When it comes up this far, it makes the truck unstable. and it's hard to hold a wheelie. So again, if it would uh, limit the angle, it'd be a big improvement. The top speed claim of this truck, HBX indicates it'll go 52 kilometers per hour, which is 32 miles an hour. On 2S, that's not gonna happen. You're not even gonna approach those speeds. 
This truck is not rated for 3S use. Again, it worked fine for 3S in my testing. Granted, I did not run it when it was hot outside. So I think as long as you're mindful of how hot the ESC is getting, you're not running it in tall grass for extended periods of time at 3S. And uh, you know, you just give it some breaks as needed. Mine seemed fine at 3X and worst case, if you burn up the ESC, it's upgrade time. You can get a better combo. But to hit the speed on the box of 52 kilometers per hour, you need a 3S battery. Now at 3S, it did exceed the manufacturer's claim. With this battery, it actually hit 56 kilometers per hour or nearly 35 miles an hour. So I can't say enough good things about this tattoo battery. Been very impressed with it and uh, I highly recommend it. Just keep in mind, if you do buy this battery and I'll put a link in the video description, you will need to change the connector. It comes with an XT30. The um, HBX trucks run Deans, so you need to solder a new connector on there, or if you have a friend or even a hobby store, they could take care of that for you. One other con with this truck is I found the punch very aggressive. While it's fun and uh, you know it looks cool, I do worry about long-term how that's gonna affect the gearbox. Maybe on 2S it's fine. I did a video where I tore apart the gearbox and inspected it, it looked good. However, I wish there was the ability to turn the punch down with the ESC. And as far as I'm aware, there's no way to do that. So in the future, I really wish HBX would add that functionality to the ESC and you could turn it down. It would also help when you're doing speed runs and it's, it's real aggressive and it's sometimes it's too much and I, I prefer to be able to turn that down a bit. A minute ago, I touched on the handling of this truck and how it's prone to oversteer. The back end will slide around way too easily. It's hard to drift and such. And it's probably not fair to compare a 16th scale to a 10th scale. Uh, but again, the arm of Big Rock soaks up the bumps much better than the HBX truck. And the HBX truck, I found it getting real unsettled sometimes. Again, not a fair comparison, but I'm used to 10th scale and the handling characteristics is different. This has almost got its own character and its own charm in that it is so snappy and it's just all over the place and it's crazy. But if you want precise handling and such, or you're used to that with your 10th scale vehicles, it'll be a big change when you go to a small 16th scale vehicle like this HBX one here. I'm gonna finish this video off with one more pro. I forgot to mention the main reason I got this truck and it was actually gifted to me for my YouTube channel through HBX. So a big thank you to HBX for letting me test this out. But the main reason I wanted this truck for my daughter was that it is small. She's six, she's little, she loves RC cars, but my arm of Big Rock, it weighs I think it's over seven pounds. And when it's going 45 or 50 miles an hour, if it was to hit her, it could probably snap her leg. You know, it would really hurt her. I hit my foot with a Traxxas Bandit, which only weighs three and a half pounds. Ah, shit. And my, my uh, tendons were messed up for like, I don't know, a month and a half. It was not pretty. This truck weighs closer to two pounds. And I did hit her with it when we were doing the filming for my beach video. And she was fine. It didn't hurt her that bad. It was probably going 20 miles an hour when I hit her at most. And uh, it's much safer in that regard for kids. You might not think about it, but these large 10 scale cars, you know, or trucks, when kids are using them, there's a good chance sooner or later it's gonna clip them and they can do some damage. So young kids using something this size i think is much safer especially if they're going to be using it alone so i just wanted to finish off with that last pro i hope those of you that are considering a 16 scale truck found this video informative i definitely recommend this truck at this price point it's awesome very budget friendly provides a lot of technology and um, the thing's quick it's fun it's durable it's a good truck 
you know, certainly I did find a few cons with it. Some of those may not be fair, uh, asking for all that at this price point, but that's just kind of, you know, how I saw it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Again, if you want to consider this truck, I have seven other videos where I did a lot of testing on it. Definitely check those out as well. And lastly, uh, HBX has another truck. It's called the 903A. It's 112th scale. This is 116th scale. So it's a fair amount bigger. I don't think you can run it at 3S because the ESC is also rated at 35 amps. The same as this truck here. And it's quite a bit heavier. Probably really be pushing it. But um, it's only like 20 to $30 more expensive than this truck. And actually right now it's on sale for a few dollars cheaper than this truck. So that's another really strong truck that you should consider if you're looking for something in this price point. Lastly, please let me know if you have any questions. I respond to all questions I get on my channel. So I look forward to hearing from some of you guys. Take care.